Hello friends, welcome back to another video. If it's the first time on the channel, my name is Shahab Katibi. Now, if you've been following the world of finance and investing, there's a good chance that you've probably heard of Mr. Heard of Mr. Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway. And there's one thing that we know about Mr. Buffett, and that is he does not believe in investing in IPOs at all. Well, you know, time changes everything and everyone, and that's exactly what's happened. Because this morning, I woke up to a news that's Berkshire Hathaway or Mr. Warren Buffett. We don't know which one made the decision, but they've decided to purchase $600 million worth of shares in a very exciting and hyped IPO that's about to have its financial debut on the financial market. And you guessed it right, I'm talking about Snowflake, a very exciting and hyped IPO, a company that's about to have its IPO on the financial market. Now, what might have caused this change of mind and change of heart in the god of investing and the financial world? Well, this should trigger an element of curiosity in every single retail investors and that's exactly what we're going to look at in this video we're going to look at what might have caused this sudden change of heart and mind in Mr Warren Buffett or probably within his organization Berkshire Hathaway so guys please stay tuned and watch until the video video it's a very exciting one indeed and before we go ahead if you find this video valuable please make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up button and really help us out thank you very much but anyways we have a lot to discuss let's get to the video let's look at some of the data about snowflakes we first go through um, what snowflake does and how does it help as a business you know what's the purpose of snowflakes and we also then look at the financial data from snowflake and then we would evaluate what might have caused the sudden change of heart and mind for mr buffett to actually purchase shares of an ipo for the first time now um Snowflake believes in a data-connected world where organizations have seamless access to explore, share, and unlock the value of data. Um, Snowflake's pioneering the data cloud and ecosystem where Snowflake customers, partners, and data providers can break down data silos and derive value from rapidly growing data sets in secure, governed, and compliant ways. Now, the cloud data platform was Snowflake is uh, the inno innovative technology that powers the data cloud. The platform enables customers to consolidate data into a single source of truth to drive meaningful business insights, build data-driven applications, and share data. They also deliver platform their platform through a customer-centric, consumption-based business model, only charging customers for the resources they use. Now, Snowflake Platform solves the decade-old problem of data silos and data governance, leveraging the elasticity and performance of the public cloud. The platform enables customers to unify and query data to support a wide variety of use cases. It also provides frictionless and governed data access so users can securely share data inside and outside of the organization, generally without copying or moving the underlying data. As a result, customers can blend existing data with new data for broader context, augment data science efforts, or create new monetization streams. Delivered as a service, their platform requires near zero near zero maintenance enabling customers to focus on delivering deriving value from the data rather than managing the infrastructure now snowflake cloud native architecture consists of three independently scalable layers across storage compute and cloud services the storage layer ingests massive amounts of varieties of structured and semi-structured data to create a unified data record and it also computed the compute layer provides dedicated resources to enable res users to simultaneously access common data sets for many use cases without latency. Now the cloud service then um, intelligently optimizes each use case's performance requirements with no administration. Now this architecture is built on three major public clouds across 22 regional deployments around the world. And these deployments are interconnected to create a single cloud data platform delivering a consistent global user experience. Now Snowflake platform supports a wide range of use cases that enable customers most important business objective including data engineering data lake data warehousing data science data applications and data sharing for example the cios choose snowflake to help migrate petabytes of raw data to the public cloud and transform it into analytics ready data now cmos choose snowflake to create 360 degree customers reviews um, business um, leaders choose um, Snowflake to distill insights from the most important business metrics. And data scientists choose Snowflake to simplify data transformation to build better machine learning algorithms. Now, businesses choose Snowflakes, of course, as the analytical engine to power their digital services. And CEOs and those in the higher level of management choose Snowflake as a strategic partner to accelerate their cloud strategies and deliver new revenue generating services. Now, from July 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2020, Snowflake processed an average of 507 million daily queries across all customer accounts, 
um, up from an average of uh, 254 million daily queries during the corresponding month of the prior fiscal year. Now, Snowflake business benefits from powerful network effects. The data cloud will continue to grow as organizations move the siloed data from cloud-based repositories and on-premise data centers to the data cloud. And the more customers adopt to the Snowflake platform, the more data can be exchanged with other Snowflake customers, partners, and data providers, enhancing the value of the platform for all users. And they believe this network effect will help them provide their vision of data cloud. Now, Snowflake platform has been used globally for organizations of all sizes across the board, um, across variety and a wide range of industries. Now, as of July 31st, 2020, they had 3,170 customers, increasing from 1,547 customers as of July 31st, 2019. Now, as of July 31st this year, 2020, the customers included seven of the Fortune Top 10 and 146 of Fortune 500 based on the 2020 Fortune 500 list. And those customers contributed approximately 4% and 26% of the revenue for six months ended July 31st this year, respectively. Now, as Snowflake customers experience the benefits of the platform, they typically expand the users significantly, as evidenced by our net revenue retention rate, which was 158% as of July 31st this year, 2020. The number of customers that contributed to more than 1 million in trailing 12 months product revenue increased from 22 to 56 as of July 31st, 2019 and 2020, respectively. Now, Snowflake has achieved significant growth in recent periods. For the fiscal year ended January 31st, 2019 and 2020, revenue was 96.7 million and 264.7 excuse me, million, respectively, re re representing year-over-year -year growth of 174%. Now, for the six months ended July 31st, 2019 and 2020, the revenue was 104 million and 242 million, respectively, representing year-over-year -year growth of 132%. Their net loss was 178 million and 348.5 million for fiscal years ended January 31st, 2019 and 2020, respectively, and 177.2 million and 171.3 million for the six months ended July 31st, 2019 and 2020, respectively. Now, to give you an industry background based on the IPO, Important technology and industry trends are changing the way organizations leverage the data. As you may have noticed from what I just read, um, basically what Snowflake does is they have set up a massive data cloud platform um, around the globe um, for companies and organizations and um, governments, perhaps all the sort of different businesses to compile the data, move the data centers uh, from on-premises, which cost them you know, maintenance and um, it costs them to build and maintain the infrastructure. It's an online data silo, and then it, it does everything. So it's an all-in-one package for all sorts of customers. Everyone, all customers that don't need to have um, any data infrastructure on premises. So everything is moved on Snowflake. Then Snowflake combines all this data, and then it becomes a massive pool, an ocean of data, if you will, um, that has bases all across the world. And businesses and CEOs and organizations can tap into that um, instantly in a very secure manner, um, process data. Um, they have no um, infrastructure costs, no maintenance costs, and it is a system that's very fast, um, very efficient, and it's on the cloud. Um, however, I mean, we haven't seen much about the secure security side of it. Um, they've really boasted and showed off the security and um, how... Um, secure the system is, um, but we have to see how much, to what extent these data will be exchanged from various organizations and if they will have access to the massive pool of information and how you know not vulnerable they are to any cyber security um, threats. Because you know, if you have all these um, uh, massive companies uh, removing their on premise data centers to Snowflake, which is a cloud based um, organization. Um, how would it affect? Obviously, there is a threat of cyber security attacks, and um, you know there must be some vulnerability. And um, anyways, we'll look at the financials. But this is an industry background. Data is becoming paramount to business success. Data is at the heart of business innovation. Recognizing this trend, organizations everywhere are seeking ways to transform their business by capturing, analyzing, and mobilizing data. The explosion of data is offering richer insights. Cloud adoption is accelerating and diversifying. Everyone's becoming a data consumer and technology consumption is moving from fixed capacity to utility. And that is true. So, um, I mean, they're addressing the right industry and the right markets. We would um, see a massive acceleration in growth for um, 
uh, cloud storage, data storage on the cloud, and also the processing of it. Um, however, with that comes vulnerability, as I said, with cyber um, security threats. Um, we have to see how Snowflake would um, react to that. They've obviously boasted on um, uh, the high retention rates for businesses, uh, but we also have to see. The only concern that I have, we will look at the um, financials as well as for the for the company. Um, as you can see, revenue has been growing, but one thing that worries me is the cost of revenue has also been almost doubling. Um, so that's an area of concern. The gross profit um, has been increasing, um, uh, you know, but um, one area of concern that I have is the cost of revenue has also been going up tremendously. As you can see, the operating expenses as a result has been doubling, more than doubling over the last uh, year, and has resulted in a net loss of um, in 2020 and the January 31st, 347 million dollars, and in January 31st, 2020, the net loss was 171 million 278 thousand US dollars. Um, is declined very marginally. So, um, uh, you know, it is a startup that have recently started. They don't have that many customers. Revenue has been growing, but so is the gross, um, the um, operating expenses and cost of revenue. But based on based on what we can see, um, the company is increasing revenue, and that was matter. That's what matters for a new IPO startup. Now, if you look at the amount of cash that they have, they have um, by now almost 886 million dollars in cash, um, which is a good thing. Um, but that's all we know about the financials that they've been increasing their revenue um, over time. Uh, but the cost of revenue has also been doubling in line with the revenue. So um, you know when you look at a new company that's going to have its IPO on the financial market. Obviously, you can't rely on the um, revenue and these metrics because the lifespan is very short and you can't look uh, back at its um, history to predict the future. You just have to have a good sense of future. Now, we know this industry is on the rise. Uh, we recently had the IPO of Encino, which is a cloud software um, company offering services to banks, sort of unifying um, all data um, storage facilities for banks into one platform, making it easier for banks to have cross-referencing between these different platforms for each customer. Um, and I think Snowflake is following in the same footsteps, but maybe on a larger scale, um, trying to create these massive data storage warehouses. Um, they've said where they're going to, they haven't really specified where they're going to use all this um, money raised. They said for general uh, corporate expenses and general corporate purposes. Uh, but as you can see, there's a strong momentum and um, they're expecting 121% um, quarterly increase in revenue. Um, why has Mr. Buffett invested in this company, perhaps? Um, I wouldn't read much into it. It was more Berkshire Hathaway and Mr. Buffett doesn't really make decisions um, entirely, entirely in its entirety by himself. And Berkshire Hathaway could be one of his um, interns or one of his um, you know, um, vice presidents or who is in charge of that department. And it wasn't a massive... Um, position either. It's a very small position from billions of dollars in cash that Berkshire Hathaway has. It was $600 million, which is basically pennies for Berkshire Hathaway. So I wouldn't really read much into it. He has a great potential. Perhaps Mr. Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway didn't want to miss the next tech opportunity as they did with Apple. As you know, they missed that. One of his biggest regrets, um, Mr. Buffett, is that he did not invest in Apple and Amazon early on. They only started building the Apple position back in 2016. Well, anyways, guys, this was a brief overview of Snowflake, uh, Snowflake and um, the financials and what the business stands for. Hopefully, it helps you out if you want to get into the business. And um, as I explained, I wouldn't read much into it of why Mr. Buffett have invested. There's no clear indication that he was behind the decision himself. It could have been some of his um, knights, uh, if you will, at Berkshire Hathaway. And it's a very tiny position for um, Berkshire Hathaway. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, please make sure if you find it found it valuable to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, it really help us out. But anyways, guys, I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.